Hi, my name is Louise Hare and I am the author of This Lovely City, which is coming out in paperback on the 4th of February. Um, and the book is about a couple, it's about Laurie and Evie. It's set in 1950 and the story begins two years roughly after Laurie has arrived from Jamaica on the Empire Windrush. And he's sort of had a few false starts but finally settled into his new life in London, falling in love with the girl next door who is Evie. And everything's looking good for them until at the end of the first chapter, Laurie makes a horrifying discovery and basically becomes involved in a murder inquiry. So it's part murder mystery and part love story. And it's about the effect of um, Laurie's um, misfortune, um, what effect that has on him and Evie, but also on the wider community, this sort of new Windrush community that's grown up around Brixton in South London. So I'm just gonna read a little bit from from that first chapter. Um, so this is Laurie um, sort of making his first mistake and being in the wrong place at the wrong time. He cycled back the way he'd come, recognising the woman he'd seen with the terrier as he drew close to Eagle Pond, but the dog was nowhere to be seen. There was something strange about the way she was moving and he found himself slowing down. She was pacing up and down in front of the pond, looking for something. Her gait was lopsided, and when she drew closer, he saw that her face was wet from tears that were blinding her. She didn't notice Laurie until the last moment, suddenly aiming towards him and coming up short as she took him in properly. She held herself rigid, her mouth gasping for air that her lungs didn't seem to want to accept. Ma'am? Laurie swung his leg and dismounted, making his movements slow so that she didn't spook. You all right? Can I help you? She looked over her shoulder but turned back to him, fixing her eyes on his uniform. Whatever she'd seen was more frightening than one skinny black man, and there was no one else in sight. You, you're a postman? Her tongue tripped as she spoke. Yes, ma'am, do you need help? She nodded and pointed in the direction she'd come from, a ragged sob creasing her body. He couldn't see anything out of the ordinary at first. There was the pond, and there he spied the terrier, the small dog was soaked through. Barking urgently at him, it ran back towards the water. The pond. The woman squeezed out the word and he noticed now that her hands were filthy, her coat spattered with mud. There's something in the pond. It was useless. She began to shiver, her teeth actually chattering as shock took hold. Laurie laid his bike down on the grass and headed towards the pond on foot. The dog was still barking in a fury, running laps between the edge of the pond and the path. What you got, boy? The dog splashed into the water, checking back to make sure he was being followed. There was a bundle there, a dirty blanket that once had been white. Laurie crouched by the edge next to a smaller set of footprints that must have belonged to the woman. It didn't look like much, this wad of sudden wool, but that didn't stop fear from squeezing his chest tight as he reached out with his right hand, the palm of his left sinking into freezing mud as he tried to keep his balance. He strained his arm and caught an inch of fabric between two fingers. Pulling gently, the bundle moved closer and he grabbed a tighter hold. The wool was heavy with water. White and yellow embroidered flowers peeked out from beneath the pond filth. Daisies. When he lifted it, the bundle was heavier than he'd anticipated, but it wasn't the weight that sent him crashing to the ground, only sheer luck landing him onto the bank rather than into the water. His heart pounded his ribs so hard that he glanced down at his chest expecting to see it burst out through his coat, scattering buttons onto the ground. The blanket lay there on the grass, the bundle coming apart. A baby's arm had escaped along with a shock of dark curly hair and a glimpse of a cheek. It could have been a doll, but one touch had been enough to convince him that it wasn't. The hand was frozen stiff, but the skin gave as his fingers had brushed against it. Someone had left a baby in the pond to die. A baby whose skin was as dark as Laurie's.